What's up everyone, welcome back to another Wooded video. We left off the last part in the Boo Saga, where Boo eventually got released and faced the Dragon Team. However, he got some shocking power-ups. First turning into Super Boo, he was then able to absorb Debora, Bobbity, and I guess Pui Pui too. The resulting transformation led him to be the powerful Debora, a Boo that has the magical abilities of Bobbity, all the power of Super Boo, and Debora. And I guess the powers of Pui Pui too. For this part, let's set a like goal of 3,000 likes, and once we hit that, I'll continue this series with another part. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's pick up from here. As I mentioned last time, Boo is now a lot stronger. Like I mentioned though, he's probably below Boo tanks in terms of power, but still, he's noticeably strong. But even though his power isn't anything too insane, what's crazy now is his magical abilities. The abilities of Boo combined with those of Bobbity, with the power of Boo and Deborah to back it up. His magic abilities are much deadlier now. Bobbity was already able to do a lot with his powers. And now, Boo has all of those. Plus, he has more power in terms of strength. This is a deadly combination. And yes, although his strength doesn't match something like Boo Tanks, or even Boo Han for that matter, I'd actually say he's probably more fearsome just because of the magic abilities that he has now. The group's first idea is to escape, but guess what? That's not happening. If they teleport anywhere, he could follow them, and if they try to fly away, well, he could teleport to them too. His magical abilities allow him to manipulate the battlefield, and give him a huge advantage in the fight. So since the group can't retreat and try and think of something else, they have no choice but to fight here. And although it's going to be tough, they at least want to try. Somehow, they have to work around his magic. The thing is, it's not like the group is weak in comparison. I mean, you have a bunch of strong Saiyans up against him. But the issue is even with that, Boo's regeneration right now is just too fast. And his magical abilities prevent them from coordinating well. He's just as good defensively as he has offensively. And this is going to cause some issues. The group consults Shin for a plan and he tries to think, but he can't really come up with anything. His magical abilities and his strength are too much for them. They're just gonna have to try brute force. Too bad they can't go inside of Boo and cut all the people out of him. Wait, what'd he say? Shin mentions that if they were able to, going inside of Boo and freeing Bobbity, Deborah, and Pui Pui might reverse all of this. But the issue is, there's no way for them to shrink down and get in there. And even if they did, how would they do it without getting spotted? Hmm, shrinking down. This gives Goku an idea. It's been a long time, and he's not sure if this device still exists, but he remembers a while ago, way back, that Bulma had some sort of shrinking device. Wait, what? Yeah, maybe if someone can escape and go over to Capsule Corp or something, well, they can shrink down and go inside a Boo, however gross that sounds. So during the fight, someone's gonna have to sneak away so they can come back and, well, do the deed. It sounds gross, but Turles volunteers. This sounds like fun. As the rest of the group begins an all-on attack against Boo, it creates a distraction so Turles can escape without Boo noticing. As long as Turles is back quickly, Boo probably wouldn't notice because there's already a bunch of people after him right now. Remember, it's not just the Saiyans here either. Boo's magic is pretty annoying. He's able to teleport people wherever he wants, alter the battlefield, and even tries to change the gravity at some points. Although the gravity change doesn't hurt the Saiyans too much. Sure, it slows them down, but they've had practice in 500 times gravity and above. This is child's play. It seems Boo's having his fun, which is good as long as everyone can avoid his candy beams. They're able to hold off Boo while Turles heads to Capsule Corp, which is pretty much evacuated by now. Thankfully, Dr. Breeze is there, and he actually knows the device that Turles is talking about. They have some stored away somewhere. So quickly, he's able to get one for Turles, and then he heads back off to the fight. A little nervous, but also kind of excited. He will be the champion for the day. As he's flying back, midair, he activates the device. He begins shrinking and shrinking while he's flying, and this lets him enter the battlefield covertly. He doesn't want Boo noticing him entering once again. Shin's been paying close attention to all the energies entering the battlefield, and although it's muddled in all the other keys of everyone else, he could sense Turles entering once again, even though he can't see him. This is good. The plan should work. Okay, now he has to wait for an opening, a point in which Boo opens his mouth long enough for him to go in. Perfect. Boo just did a crazy maniacal laugh. Turles takes this opportunity to fly in, Boo begins coughing like a madman. He must have swallowed a fly or something. Gross. And since he doesn't know Turles is in there, he doesn't have other Boos inside of him guarding him. Turles descends. And in Boo's stomach, he finds them. Bobbity, Deborah, Pui Pui, and Fat Boo. Instead of just cutting them out, why not just kill them? And he does that. Since they're unconscious, he's able to kill Bobbity, Deborah, and Pui Pui. After he cuts them out. And although he's not sure what it'll do, he also frees Fat Boo, but he doesn't seem able to kill him. Even though he's unconscious, that regeneration is still annoying. But the good thing is at least this one wasn't as bad as the other Boo that swallowed him. So maybe they don't have to worry about him. Boo begins shaking as Turles escapes with good Boo in his hands, dragging him by the antenna on his head. Turles flies out of his mouth and goes to normal size. 
and Dabura sees what he's done. He's unstable now. Good Abu has been freed. All his sense of logic and reasoning are going to be gone now, as well as his power. He curses Turles as he screams and transforms. Regressing, he shrinks, changing appearance once more. And after the transformation completes, Kid Buu is revealed to be in his place. Immediately, he does what Kid Buu would do in this situation and tries to blow up Earth. But with everyone around, they're able to defend, nullifying the attack. He may not be as strong as Dabura before, but he's unhinged here and won't hesitate to do anything, even destroying Earth. He's a loose cannon of pure evil, and everyone has to be on their best guard. But this seems like the opportunity they've been waiting for. They aren't sure what to do about Good Boo, but Shin guards him just so he doesn't cause havoc in case he does wake up. They don't know if he's trustworthy. The rest of the dragon team takes on Kid Boo, with one half of the team basically defending against his attacks trying to blow up Earth, while the other half is focused on offense. Boo's overwhelmed, but their attacks individually can't kill him. He keeps regenerating. They need to coordinate one massive attack that'll completely incinerate him. Then they realize, when he's about to attack, that's their opening. Some of the fighters fly up into the air, distracting Boo. He prepares a massive attack and flings it up into the sky. They don't need to waste time nullifying it because there's nothing behind them. And immediately once he attacks, Shin is able to teleport to them and then teleport them behind Boo with the rest of the fighters. Just as Boo finishes launching his attack, he turns around, seeing a massive group of fighters preparing to kill him. With one huge combined blast, their attacks all group together and hit Boo head on. He tries his best to push back, but he can't. His hands begin to disintegrate, then his arms. With one final push, the group lets out all their energy. This is so many attacks combined, I don't even know what it would be called. The dragon team's dragon beam? Not important. This blast careens off into space, destroying every little cell of Boo. His body tries to regenerate, but whenever it does, those cells are destroyed. He's completely and utterly eradicated. Earth is now saved. Thankfully, later on, they're able to bring anyone back to life and restore any damage with the Dragon Balls. And they're happy to have one here. Shin thanks everyone and they return the thanks, as everyone goes back to their normal, peaceful lives. So in the last video I did mention, what would Broly's career be here? I gave a career to everyone else, so he's gonna get one as well. Over this time, Paragus retires to Monster Island, where Broly lives with him. Why is Broly here? Well, he's taking Android 17's place, being a ranger on this island. There is no 17 here, and since protecting animals probably would be up Broly's alley, this is perfect for him. It's peaceful, fun, fulfilling, and Android 17 somehow got strong defending against poachers. So who knows, maybe Broly can get some nice training in too. This was suggested a lot in the comments, and I feel it's a good occupation for him. And over these next few years, everyone continues with their lives. Although it's been a while since some of them have seen each other. And it's not only time for Bumble's birthday party, but it's about time for a reunion. Sadly, Broly and Paragus aren't able to make it, kinda caught up with the island, but at least they'll be able to catch up with everyone later on. And Goku's actually not with King Kai this time, he's present at the party. And there's a lot, and I mean a lot, of sparring matches going on. A bunch of other Saiyans are there. Vegeta's trying to train up Tarable, Raditz is chilling with his boy Turles, Nappa's there, Gine's there, and of course, Shala and Giblet are there, as chefs. That is their occupation after all, so Boma decided, hey, why not hire them to cater the party? They'll probably make some great food. And I'm mentioning this because it actually comes into play later. Yes, them making food is actually an important plot point here. Because guess who's about to show up? Awakening from his slumber, Beerus is taken to Earth. Hearing that this is the only planet that Saiyans are left on. He had some dream about a Super Saiyan God, and he wants to find out what it is or if it exists. Vegeta, Nappa, Tarble, and Raditz already know who he is, and Turles probably would as well, considering he's around the same age as Raditz. They're surprised to see him here, and a little bit intimidated, but Beerus is actually around to enjoy the party. Funny thing is, Boo's actually there this time. He lived in one of my scenarios for once. Maybe his friendship with Mr. Satan still is a thing here, and there's actually no pudding debacle. Shalit and Giblet are so intimidated that whenever they hear about Beerus wanting some sort of food, they instantly prepare a heap of whatever he asked for. He gets to enjoy his pudding alongside Boo. Pretty fun but he makes it clear why he's here. He wants to find out about the Super Saiyan God. And none of them seem to know anything. They even call up Paragus, who is an older Saiyan, and he's surprised to hear that Beerus is at the party. And I feel like since Paragus is such a high-level Saiyan, and he's been around for decades, he might actually have some knowledge about the Super Saiyan God, or at least the myth of it. He doesn't know how one is created, but he's able to explain the backstory of it and give Beerus some insight. But he does say this is a myth after all, and he doesn't know how much of it is really true. Somehow, they're still going to have to find out about how to actually get the form. So, Shenron is summoned. And the good thing is here, they have more than enough Saiyans for the ritual. But who's actually going to be the one to achieve it first? Well, obviously, they're going to want to give it to one of the stronger people in the group. 
someone they know can handle the power and possibly give Beerus a good fight. Having been under his command for so long, a lot of the Saiyans look for Vegeta to get the form. And Goku actually agrees. Out of all the other Saiyans' respect for him as a prince and their former leader, and the fact that they know he's one of the stronger ones here, he's chosen to be the one to become a Super Saiyan God. Goku and Gohan were both considered, as well as Broly, but Broly's not there. And Goku and Gohan think it's fitting for Vegeta to get it. Besides, they could always get it later on. The ritual is done, and Vegeta gets new power. While in Super Saiyan, he floats up into the air, and his glow changes. After light dissipates, he's revealed to have red hair, and a fiery aura. Vegeta has become a Super Saiyan God. Beerus is pretty impressed. This definitely has to be the Super Saiyan God he was thinking of. Vegeta is intrigued and excited, and invites Beerus to fight. The God of Destruction gladly accepts, and faces off against the Prince of All Saiyans. Both of them enjoy the fight greatly. Although, Vegeta does drop out of the form briefly during the fight. Back into Super Saiyan, it seems he has absorbed the power of Super Saiyan God into his base form and Super Saiyan, making him a lot stronger from the get-go. Beerus is keen to pick up on this and Vegeta doesn't even notice at first. And of course, the fight isn't hostile here. Beerus got his pudding, so he's happy. He doesn't promise to blow up Earth or anything, he's glad to have fought Vegeta too. And he's pleased overall, although, he does point out. The Super Saiyan God form, and Vegeta for that matter, have way more potential than what he saw during that fight. Somehow it could be trained further, he knows it, and Vegeta may truly be his rival. Yearning for more, he decides he actually wants to take a student, or maybe a few, and Whis will train whatever student this is. But the thing is, there's so many Saiyans here, who's he gonna pick? I mean, he can't just take everyone. Plus, some people have responsibilities here. Vegeta clearly doesn't, I mean, he doesn't really have a job like the others. And of course, he's Beerus' first choice. He is also interested in Goku, but he has someone else in mind. Actually, two people. He turns to Shallot and Giblet, the twins. It would be fun to train them. Why does he pick them? Well, they're chefs. He can get a bunch of great food out of them. And in exchange, he'll show them some great powers. Really, in his head, he's thinking about how he just got himself two personal chefs. But hey, at least this makes him look good for taking on some more students. Shallot and Giblet happily accept. And it seems now he's going to train these three. That's right, Goku's actually not going to go with Beerus this time. Instead, he'll actually try to pursue the god form on Earth. Maybe some others will join him as well. Beerus thanks everyone for the food and the great fight, and tells Vegeta, Shallot, and Giblet that he'll be back in a few days to pick them up. They're about to get started on the training of their lives. This will be a great new endeavor for them, but we're going to save that for the next part, and leave off here for now. So how do you guys think the training will go with Beerus? What do you think will happen next time, and what did you think of this part? Leave your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below, and I'll be sure to check them out to see what you guys think. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to drop a like, and once we hit the like goal, I'll continue this series with another part. And if you haven't already, why not subscribe, as well as hitting the bell icon to get notified about any future parts of this series or any other videos I upload on my channel. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in my next video.